you can think of your data source view as an abstract data warehouse. So you could have actually built a data warehouse that looks exactly like your data source view, but it may not always look exactly like your data source view. It'll be a combination of some things that are exactly like they are in the underlying databases, and you'll probably have some things that you've added in and implemented only in a logical way. One of the important concepts that you'll implement is foreign keys. So in this data source view, you can see I have two tables, sales and store. So this diagram shows that my sales are related to the store in a many-to-one fashion. For every sale, I have one and only one store, and each store can have a lot of sales. And I can see that by looking at the arrow that points from the sales to the store. So the tip of the arrow indicates the one part, and the other end of the arrow indica indicates the many. If I double click on that arrow, I can see what that relationship is. And in fact, I could even change that relationship if I wanted to. These relationships can exist in the underlying database, or they may be only logical constructs that we add to our DSV. In this case, the sales and store were added automatically to the DSV because they do exist underneath. And I could see that by going and looking at the database, and maybe looking at a database diagram. And within this diagram, I can see a relationship between the store and the sales table already exists in the underlying database. And when I pull that into my DSV, that was automatically represented. You can also see that the DSV picked up the primary keys from these underlying tables and registered them. And that's all well and good for these tables that were in a nicely structured database underneath. But what about this other table that came from a different data source that doesn't have a primary key and no known relationship to the existing tables? And the answer to that is we can relate this table logically within the DSV itself. So with this table, I know that the primary key is the zip code. So I'll set the logical primary key to be the zip code. Now here's an important point that I'm telling the DSV that that zip code is the primary key. It's unique. That may or may not actually be true. So you have to be mindful when you're making these changes in the DSV that they are in fact reality. If I tell the DSV that the zip code is the primary key and it's unique and it's not, I'm probably going to have errors as I'm building my solution. So do be careful about that. So with the primary key set, that's the first fact. The second fact I want to record is that the zip code in my store table has a many to one relationship over to this statistical area table by zip code. And again, if I click on that, I can see how that's set up. To summarize, this is my physical key is in the underlying database, and I knew that because I can actually look over here and see that it exists. The nice thing about having these nice physical relationships intact within your underlying database is every time you bring these tables into a DSV, all of these facts are already going to be recorded by the DSV, what the primary keys are, what the relationships are. It's going to make your life a lot easier, so do implement that in the relational side if you can. But sometimes you can't. If the tables are from different databases, then obviously there's no foreign key relationship. In that case, we can go ahead and use the right click and set primary keys, set relationships with drag and drop. So with all of our relationships intact and primary keys and foreign keys established within the DSV, we can move on and go ahead and start designing dimensions.